Hi, everyone. Welcome back. In section three, we're going to work on our database. So let's take a look at setup with Mongoose and MongoDB. Mongoose is an abstraction layer for MongoDB, and its job is to make working with MongoDB easier. MongoDB is a database that uses a format that's like JSON. It's used in our example Bird Squawk app, but a microservice can really be any type of database. It doesn't have to be MongoDB. In real life, you should choose the type of database that's going to work best with your microservice. In the next lesson, we're going to begin to make our app a little bit more complicated. So we're going to work with Kubernetes and uh, change from a Kubernetes pod to a Kubernetes deployment. We're going to deploy a MongoDB instance and we're going to connect to it from Mongoose within our Bird Squawk microservice. So get ready to do some coding. Thanks for listening. I'll see you then. Hi, guys. Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to install Mongoose and MongoDB in the Bird Squawk service. Mongoose is an abstraction layer that helps us uh, when we're working with MongoDB to make coding a little bit easier. So let's get started. For the next step, you will need TypeScript installed. If you don't have that already, just uh, go to this URL, npmjs.com forward slash package slash TypeScript, and follow the instructions. Uh, simply run the command npm install dash g TypeScript to globally install TypeScript. Okay, let's get started by adding Mongoose and MongoDB to our project. So in VS Code, I'm going to open our Bird Squawk folder and let's go into the Bird Squawk service. And um, so we'll just right click and click on Open Integrated Terminal so we can enter some command line commands here. And we're going to add some dependencies we will need. npm install. We're going to need TypeScript, TS node dev, and at types forward slash express. Now let's do a little bit of TypeScript configuration. So let's go to our Bird Squawk service folder and open a terminal so that we can use the command tsc dash init and now we've created our typescript configuration file here for the bird squawk service next we are going to update our yaml file we're going to rename it as bird squawk dash depl for deployment and we're going to change this into a deployment type of yaml so just delete the top where we had a pod configuration here we're going to type in um, a little bit of configuration kind will be a, a deployment this time. Let's name it bird squawk dash depl so that we'll know what it is easily when we see it in our lists. Uh, replicas one means we just want one copy of the pod. We can specify as many there as we want. Selector tells Kubernetes which pods it's managing. Under match labels, we're going to tell it app colon bird squawk. So it's going to look for that label to manage. Now here in the template section, we're going to tell it about the pod that we actually want Kubernetes to create. We're going to give it a label here and it will be called app colon bird squawk to match up above. Now we have to indent our spec over for, for our container so that it falls under the template and we give it the same image name. Now let's add in our Kubernetes service so that our uh, bird squawk deployment can communicate. And we're going to just delete this version number off of the bird squawk. We will be building our uh, Docker ID in a little bit of a different way now. 
Next, we're going to put in our divider, three dashes, so that we can add the YAML configuration for our service. It'll be the cluster IP service for communication. We'll type in API version, we'll use V1, and the kind is going to be a service. The default is cluster IP. Metadata, we're going to use the same name we used up above, plus service on the end, so that we can recognize it easily. For spec, we want to select all the pods that are labeled with app bird squawk. And we were using port uh, 5000 with the bird squawk service, so we're just going to keep using port 5000. Let's go back to the K8s folder and get another terminal open there so that we can kubectl apply dash f bird squawk double yaml. All right, success. So far, we've um, added TypeScript We've changed our Kubernetes YAML into a deployment. We've added a bird squawk cluster IP service so it can communicate with other Kubernetes nodes. And in the next lesson, we're going to continue by um, configuring some more TypeScript with Mongoose and MongoDB. Thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you then. Hi guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to use Kubernetes to create a deployment for MongoDB and that database we can then use with our bird squawk service. All right, let's get started. Now we can create the deployment that we're going to use for MongoDB with our bird squawk service. So in our config k8s folder, let's create a new file and we'll name it bird squawk dash mongo dash depl.yaml. Our YAML is going to look similar. We'll use the kind, it'll be deployment. For a name, we're going to name it bird squawk dash mongo dash depl. Just one replica. We are going to select all of the pods that match the label app colon bird squawk dash mongo. Then our template to create the pods, we will label them app colon bird squawk dash mongo. And the spec to create the pods like this. Give them the name bird squawk dash mongo. And the image we're going to use is from hub.docker.com. And we'll use the, uh, the, the mongo image that they provide, which is already configured for us for mongo. Next, we use kubectl to apply our YAML. So opening a terminal in the K8s folder. Now we want to uh, put in a divider so that we can add some more YAML configuration for another object to be our cluster IP server for the MongoDB. It's going to need its own service to communicate with other Kubernetes nodes. So the kind of service, the name bird squawk dash, mongo dash service something easy to recognize remember we have to get the indentation just so each indentation is two spaces here we're going to select all of the pods that have the label bird squawk dash mongo
we'll just give it a name database. Protocol is our usual TCP. And the ports, ports um, I got from hub.docker.com where it specifies that this image uses 27017 for the port. Cube CTL apply dash F. And then the name of the file is bird squawk dash mongo dash depl dot yaml. We hit enter and it's been applied. Let's use C cube CTL get services to see what we have running. You can see our bird squawk mongo service, our bird squawk service, and a peeps service cluster IP. And that's what we uh, were using in the last lesson. So far, we've created a Kubernetes deployment for our bird squawk microservice. And then we have a couple different kinds of services, which are the Kubernetes services. And these are totally different from microservices. But the Kubernetes services are used for communication between Kubernetes nodes. And those are of the type cluster IP, which is always used to communicate inside of a Kubernetes cluster. We've done a lot of building so far, but in the next lesson, we're going to dig into some of the uh, code that we need in order to work with TypeScript and Mongoose. All right, thank you very much for listening. I'll see you then. Hi guys, welcome back. We're gonna start making our app a little bit more complicated. So we're gonna update a couple things in the bird squawk service, we're going to start adding TypeScript and Mongoose. So let's get started with some coding. We are getting ready to make our app more complex. So we want to change over our bird squawk service to a different format. We're going to just delete this previous file we had for index.ts. And we are going to create a new folder the source folder named src. Inside of that folder, let's create a new file called index.ts for TypeScript. We'll put in some of our boilerplate, import express and call express to create an app. Then we'll use express.json to parse our JSON. And we'll listen on port 5000 like before and print out a console log to show that bird service is listening on port 5000. Now, instead of putting our routes right into our index.ts file, we're going to create a new folder within the SRC folder and name it routes. And within that, we'll create a new file called routes.ts. Let's add some of our boilerplate for our routes. We'll import express and this time we'll import the request and response interface as well. We'll create the constant router equal to express dot router called as a function. And then we can create our git. We'll use the route of API bird squawk git. I'm going to add the quotes in. Request and response. And we'll just print out a console log at this point to say that it's working. And we'll create another route for the post API bird squawk post request and response with the interface for TypeScript. We'll just leave this one blank for now. And then uh, we can export. A router. Now let's go to our index.ts and we can import 
the router. Now we use app.use router. Oops, sorry. Router. Now we can import mongoose. And we want to connect to MongoDB using mongoose. To do this, we're going to use an async method. So we'll need to create an async function. Right up above app.listen, we'll create constant and we'll name it startup. This will be an async arrow function. Inside of here, we can await mongoose.connect. And here's where we put in uh, the URI that we want to connect to. In this case, we will use mongodb colon slash slash copy the name of the kubernetes service that's providing this communication if we open up our bird squawk mongo depl dot yaml we can just copy and paste the exact name we used which is bird squawk dash mongo dash service we'll copy that and paste it here colon 27017 for the port. And now we can put in the name of the database. If, if the database isn't named already, Mon MongoDB will create it and we'll name this bird squawk. Now let's take this function and We'll add a, a try and catch to it to catch any errors. And then after we've awaited the mongoose connection, we can then do the app listen. And so we've wrapped that all into the same function. And then we'll just call the function right at the end. So first it will try to connect to mongoose and then it will listen on port 5000. This video is starting to run a little bit long, so we're going to take a break now. What I'd like you to try to do is see if you can figure out how to run this and get your console log messages. Uh, when we come back, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and we'll go through it together. Thanks a lot for listening. I will see you then. Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lesson, we wanna test what we've done so far with Mongoose and TypeScript. Let's revisit our Docker file inside of the Bird Squawk service. <clears throat> Earlier, we were building the node Alpine image. Let's look at Docker Hub. Here we have hub.docker.com, and we're at the node section for the official Node.js image. This will tell you about Alpine and the other images available that you can use. For the next step, 
Let's switch this to 14. So we'll use node version 14 from hub.docker.com. Everything else can stay the same. Let's save that. Now let's open a terminal in the bird squawk service and we'll run our command docker build with a dash t for tags. The tag we want to use is your docker hub username. And we'll call this bird squawk. Let's open a terminal now in the bird squawk folder and we'll use our docker build command with a t flag so dash t it'll be like this now use your docker hub name we'll name it bird squawk Now space and dot, and the dot tells us to go from the root directory. All right, I gave you a challenge in the last lesson to see if you could get these uh, console logs to show up. Might've been quite a challenge. Maybe you thought, that you could try um, opening a terminal. You might use the command docker run and then the image name, similar to what we did in the earlier lesson. We got one of our console log messages. It's listening on port 5000. Oh, we got an error because the bird squawk Mongo service isn't running. Well, there's another way we can approach this. Instead of just running the Docker image, we'll, we'll use Kubernetes. Let's just go back over to the config K8s, open an integrated terminal, kubectl apply dash f, Bird squawk mongo depl dot yaml. And then we'll do kubectl apply bird squawk deployment depl dot yaml. So let's see what we have running now. kubectl get pods. Here. We can see what pods we have. The bird squawk depl with an instance and the bird squawk mongo depl with its instance. They're both running and they're both ready. Let's do kubectl get services. These are our cluster IP services that we have for communication. We've got one for the bird squawk Mongo service, one for the bird squawk service. So far, so good. How can we see those console logs now? Kubectl logs will tell us what logs we have for a pod. We want to just copy the pod name with all of these random numbers and letters. Paste it. We can now ask what logs we have. Here we can see that we connected to Mongo and the bird squawk service is listening on port 5000. 
Okay, pretty cool. So far, so good. All right, everyone, that's it for this lesson. We were able to uh, implement some TypeScript, um, import Mongoose, create a deployment for our MongoDB, and then connect our Bird Squawk service to our uh, Bird Squawk Mongo deployment. So uh, that was a good first step in making our app more complex. Um, thanks a lot for listening. Up next, we do kind of a recap of the whole section. I'll see you then. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're going to take a look at the summary of our MongoDB setup now. First, we had to create a Mongo database deployment. And we used the MongoDB image from hub.docker.com. It's pretty much a standard image. The default port for MongoDB is 27017. And that was listed there on the hub.docker.com page. We wanted to create a Kubernetes deployment. So we had to write a YAML. And that YAML, um, we put a divider in and we created a second object to create a cluster IP service as well for our Mongo deployment. So it's deploying both the MongoDB database and also deploying cluster IP service that it can use to communicate. Then we had to connect to our MongoDB. So in our bird squawks service, we imported mongoose, and then we had to create an async await function to connect to MongoDB. We, we created that function and we put our uh, app listen inside of it, and then we called the function. When we connected with mongo.connect, we used the MongoDB cluster service name as a URI. So instead of like putting in the route, we just copied and pasted the exact service name in. And then of course we added colon and the port and so on. We were able to um, also add in a little bit of TypeScript and get our app ready to be more complex. Thanks a lot for listening. Up next, we have a little quiz to test your knowledge. And then in section four, we're going to work with creating the front end with React. I'll see you then.